Hey everyone and welcome to the MSC Performance Podcast. This is Series 2, Episode 6 with myself, Mark and Sonia. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Luke. Nice to meet you, very formal. Uh, today's podcast is going to be questions that have been asked to us throughout the week. So we get a few questions through the week. Some of them are, are interesting, some of them are short answers. So we're just going to go through three interesting questions um, that people have asked us, mainly in Barbar Club, but also just people that are training at MSC. So we thought it might be good information for you guys. Um, if there is any topics that you want to discuss or any ideas that you've got for the podcast please let us know because you are the listeners we want you to get as much information out of the podcast as possible uh so before we delve in we've got a bit of uh administration to go through yeah we would just like to say that obviously as you see on youtube if you're watching youtube that uh, we were in um some msc new winter stash so we've got some hats available <laughs> this, is, this is a brooklyn nets <laughs> hat this is not an msc hat uh, yeah no but we obviously have some limited uh, winter edition uh now available down at msc so um if you like it and if you kind of keen to support msc um secure um uh, your stash secure your spot or let us know um because obviously it's gonna go it's yeah. going quite quick stock is limited so yeah but it's it's been really successful um that's that's the new stash so there are some pictures on instagram modeled by Model. people said i couldn't become a model i'm too sure <laughs> and i've proved them all wrong so i heard good feedback on the pictures they there were you funny, go. Apparently. and then the second one is this saturday we have a halloween party which we're really excited for for uh, the members and friends of msc performance uh down at thousand trades from 6 p.m so fancy dress is not uh, compulsory but it is encouraged um, and me and luke will definitely we've both be got working, something planned so, so yeah it should be a good time so if you want to come along guys thousand trades from 6 p.m this saturday at the 30th uh apart from that should we uh, get stuck in yes let's go so we have three questions today um yeah the first one well the three questions are um should i be looking to progress from the trap bar to conventional deadlift that's talking about uh, mainly the barbar club. Um, someone asked about the differences between dieting if you're doing bodybuilding or if you have more aesthetic goals um, compared to if you're doing a strength sport. And then the third one is our pull-ups and essential exercise. Should I be looking to do them? If I can't do them, should I be progressing to them? So yeah, three very different questions. Let's um, get stuck in. Yeah, I think um, I'll start with a little bit on the trap bar and conventional. So like obviously, let's say in our barbell club, people kind of do a bit of both. Um, and I came across people who don't want to uh, go from conventional to trap bar or vice versa, yeah. which is weird. Why is that, Luke? Are you uh, trying to convince everyone to do powerlifting? I, it's really <laughs> funny because people presume because I'm a powerlifter that they would say, oh, do you want me to do conventional then Should I be looking I to don't. progress? And I'm almost anti-deadlift. Good. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm obviously a massive component. I love deadlifting. It's a fantastic exercise. If you're a powerlifter, you should be looking to do conventional deadlifts. If you're not, there are a lot of negatives to the regular deadlift compared to the trap bar. Uh, so I guess those are the main things to kind of discuss. And then like, why would you do a conventional deadlift? So do you want to talk through the think, um, advantages of the trap bar? Yeah, I think like for most people who have like office job or are not very active, like athletic wise and just want to build some general strength. Um, I think Trabar is a great option because it takes a lot of demand of the back, um, especially if you, you know, sat all day or most of the day. Yeah. Um, then obviously conventional deadlift has a lot of impact on the back. And I think when people tend to go heavy on these, the injuries usually be like uh, come from the conventional deadlift when they push in it um i think a lot of yeah absolutely that so the demands of the lower back are increased and that's not necessarily a bad thing but yes, there are more uh, risks yeah. to it yeah um so obviously there's a lot of people that can tolerate a lot of heavy deadlifting they have great technique they've built up their tolerance over right. time for conventional deadlift but you are going to be more prone to injuries if your technique is, isn't fully dialed in or you, you're actually struggling to get the start position which is another thing with a trap bar is like you've just yeah. touched on if you've got an office job um and you're not quite got the mobility or flexibility or just haven't got the right limbs to to get into a good deadlift position it's a little bit harder it's a little bit tricky to get to the conventional while i've not met anyone that can't get into a, a high handled trap bar yeah basically like the the handles are obviously on the side, so it's a bit more like lateral spread loading compared to the conventional. Um, it's probably easier to learn to begin with if you're just learning the hinge pattern um, as it replicates like almost like, I always say like picking up bags, like think of it simple as it is. Um, and I think the other benefits are that if you focus in your training on something 
else maybe if it's not particularly the biggest deadlift and you're doing i don't know loads of like strongman stuff or you know maybe weightlifting like i, I myself include trap bar deadlifts in my um training because i just save the back basically yeah. that way that's one of the points I wanted to talk about is the, the flexibility of the trap bar to get into different positions and you can kind of bias what you want to work on or what you need to work around more importantly. So for yourself, lots of back dominant exercises, you want to try to save your back. If you're doing conventional on top, your body can only recover from so much and you might have to, to take something away. And obviously for yourself, your priority is your weightlifting. So if you're adding conventional in and you're not recovering as well, something's got to give. Well, with the trap bar, you can get that slightly more quiet position, a bit more knee dominance. Exactly. With the conventional, you pretty much got it. It's got to be a very hip dominant, hingy pattern. You can't avoid it. So I do like, let's say, if someone's got like a, a lower back issue and whenever they're in that hinged pattern where they're really horizontal, they find it uncomfortable on their back. With the trap bar, you can really get into a, a more of a squatting position. And vice versa, if you find that... Um, knee dominant work is causing you issues if you had a bit of knee pain or knee discomfort you could go to like a, a vertical shear pure hinge there's a lot more flexibility to get into the position that best suits you while conventional everyone's looks very very similar i personally also like uh rdl with drop drop bar to be fair. yeah um, exactly you can do the high yeah. hip you can do the squat you can do both it's yeah. fantastic um let me ask you a question why i've never seen you doing drop bar the lift? ah it's in my program i've done it the last oh, three weeks wow um so i think if you're yeah so my, how, how come is it in your program now why is i good? just finished world my i'm not feeling well i've had a tough year a couple of little niggles i need to give myself a chance to be 100 percent. so in terms of reducing the stress um i've gone for but i i thought week one i thought it was a low handle trap bar and i was like oh this is going to be great it's fucking hard man. <laughs> <laughs> the high handle is sound like i did it, it feels yeah. quite comfortable um do you still have conventional in plan as well paused paused okay. so I'm, I'm in a, i'm in a low stress high variation uh, kind of like a, a restorative or um what's it called transitional block so the aim is just to get 100 percent healthy so to reduce the stress down i've gone to a trap bar and for exactly the reasons we've said yeah, like yeah. it's very demanding exercise i'm very lucky that i can tolerate a decent amount of conventional work but in terms of reducing stress the trap bar is definitely better so i've actually got it in now so okay, there you go for know. the next 10 weeks there you go uh, that's exciting could we maybe um uh say uh because like i'm not really sure i know that obviously it's a bit more you can lift on a trap bar but if we talk percentage wise yeah. where does it stand compared to your convention that lift i've literally done so i did high handles for the first time on saturday and i did 220 for three fives and it was very easy mm -hmm. It's, it is easier. I, I, I don't know the number yet. I've got to run it for a few more weeks, but like I'm doing three fives at five RPE, so it's really difficult to compare. But I wouldn't be doing three fives at 220 would be harder, a lot harder. I imagine as I get used to the trap bar, because the, the skill of it, et cetera, uh, maybe 10, 15%. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you an answer when I know it. Um, but yeah, a lot less stress. So on the flip to that, why would you conventional deadlift? Uh, I personally want to do conventional deadlift uh, because I normally just do like clean pulls or snatch pulls. So I am adding a bit of a shrug into it. Um, the do you find pull. it the conventional interferes positionally with the clean pull? Because I know a lot of weightlifters actually yeah. do sumo or trap bar yeah. to avoid okay. the positions getting too... I, I did think yes, but then let's say I spoke to Max about it and uh, because of the issue I had with my back, yeah. he said I should not conventional deadlift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because that would be the one which would probably trigger it the yeah. most. But for what for weightlifters, then would you give them conventional or would you prefer trap bar or sumo or some kind of like hybrid position? Mixed. Mixed. There yeah, you go. like I tend to give my clients trap bar who weightlift uh, because it, they do a lot of posterior work. Um, so to kind of take on the demand, yeah, trap, yeah. trap bar. Yeah. Um, and if anything, I tend to keep the pulls in. So yeah. Exactly. Really. More specific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So basically, if you want to, if you want to be really good at conventional deadlifting, or you really enjoy yeah. it, fantastic crack on. You don't have to conventional deadlift. It's definitely not a progression. It's not like trap bars of regression. For, that that they're two really good, good exercises in their yeah. own right. So you don't want to be looking at it and say it's only like a safety bar to a back squat. It's not a regression. It's an exercise in its, it's own right, and that's super important to yeah. realize because the amount of people that think, "Oh, I'm on the trap bar, I must be really shit at lifting." Yeah, it's, it's absolutely not. not the case. It's a great exercise in its own right, and we've just said that when we're not looking to push conventional as hard or we're not powerlifting, we would both choose trap bar in a heartbeat because there's a lot of extra benefits And I to think it. I would again mention what you kind of pointed out that if you are maybe built and suitable more to one or another, 
just do what you're better off with and absolutely and like do what you enjoy yeah if you exactly. want a conventional deadlift yeah. conventional deadlift if you yeah. don't if, you, if you're trying to think you've got to do it don't force yourself yeah. don't force the position so they're both fantastic exercises i think there's more risk with the conventional to the trap bar the trap bar a little bit easier to get the weight for the center mass little more flexibility with your position i also like for pretty much everyone even with the low handles you can lift more with the trap bar so you get the same range of motion more uh force production so actually probably better outcomes so if your outcome is just like gaining strength power uh, muscle size trap bar is probably as good if not better um uh, not sure about the high handles because the reduced range but... yes um but i think like you summarize it perfectly there you go so <laughs> don't think of them as regressions of progressions they're two completely different exercises um you don't have to progress in one if you want to fantastic but yeah not anyone has to do any mirror to any one exercise which leads us into question two are pull-ups essential good okay. you're very passionate about this because you can't do them <laughs> Uh, I'm joking. You, you can, you can do I it, can do a few. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you train them and if you practice them, you are better, um, and you get better, and you can do more. But so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> if you do pull-ups, you'll get better at them. That's, uh, that's the new merch for, uh, for, for, for spring. Uh, do you know what? Like many people come to me and say that, like, oh, I really would like to do a pull-up because I think there's something about it. Like you can Lots basically. Lots of people have a goal of doing yeah. a pull-up. Or like, yeah. there's something about the ability to pull yourself up. I, I think I've been there as well a couple of years back. But then when you do it, it's like, okay, Next. that's it. Yeah. yeah. Like there are other ways how to kind of like, you know, get the upper body strength, the back strength or whatever you're after. Um what I maybe I'm gonna say that like what I don't like is the variation of the keeping pull up. I don't think that has anything to do with strength. It's not. It's it's very much a sport orientated thing, and you yeah. should not be looking at CrossFit and thinking this is the best exercise to develop any kind of athletic quality apart from being good at keeping pull ups. Basically, yeah. yeah. So this is just like a quick note to it, and um, yeah. So you obviously have the pull up and a chin up variation. I'm not gonna lie, I'm better in the chin ups. And I think everyone is. Okay. Unless you really lack the... Yeah, the, to be the fair, I only started doing them when you kind of advised me in the program. you yeah. back, do you remember? For chin-ups. For chin-ups. Oh, cool. And because of that, I can now do a couple of sets on yeah. my own without yeah. It's great, it's great. Yeah. I, so, pull-ups are great. One of my favourite upper-back exercises. They're not essential. I think that you need to have a good ability to do pull-ups and chin-ups to really get the benefit from them. Because the amount of people that are trying so hard to get like a set of three or four and they're sacrificing the technique, they're really extended through the back so they're not really targeting the lats as much as keeping like a, a ribs down pattern. They sacrifice so much to actually do a pull-up that they lose the majority of the benefit of actually doing a pull-up. Um, so I definitely don't think they're essential. And like you said, there's there's so many other like good vertical pulls that you could be doing instead. And especially like if you maybe like, you know, like heavyweight person like you're not necessarily like light like i'm not like it's the thick the thick kings and queens <laughs> the thick people no like you don't necessarily have to torture yourself using i don't know how many resistant bands to get yourself like fucking hanging from a band <laughs> someone pushing your hands up yeah it's, it's not i'm bad. sorry but like i've seen some terrible stuff like just for the sake of getting the head over the rig like yeah. you're better on that pull up pull down machine Flat pull down oh. feet support is absolutely <laughs> exactly what what do you like pull ups for like like do you if you can do them do you rate them as a as an upper back developer and exercise or what else do you uh, like them for probably yes like the upper back exercise um a good like vertical pull I, I like it yes I'm not gonna lie like I do have them in the plan um now I have a negative pull-up variation are you um, um super maximally loading that or just doing body just weight? doing body weight but I guess that is super maximal to you because you can't actually do them <laughs> yes <laughs> I'm joking no it's, um do you know why because they are really hard and yeah. it's something like what really challenges Challenging. me and because I, I kind of like plan my training on my own. I usually have things I like. So. Well, mate, that, if that's if that's not an advert for getting coaching, I don't know what. Oh, is. mate, I, no, I would never do this like sure. to anyone else. Like it's just with me. Like no, but that's what I mean. Like you should not just be doing the things. I know, and that's why I chip it. That's why I you ask these people. things basically. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, it's hard, but yeah. as you said, like I don't think it's essential as well. So unless you like let's say I know like basketball players I think that's quite a good measure or I know Rowan Paul Walton 
um yeah. he kind of like uh, do does these like weighted heavy for max yeah. um karen i think was like really aiming for this like it it must be might maybe just your specific uh, goal this is the one part i mean i think they were really good like the, you don't have to do them all the time but they were a good test of like your relative strength yes so if you're trying to lose weight or gain weight if you're losing weight you're in a calorie deficit you, you might be losing a little bit of muscle you might not but it's a good test like if your pull-ups and your are getting better as you drop weight or as you lose weight it's a good test to see if you're actually getting um if you're getting like strength, yeah, yeah strength improving yourself relative to your body weight so if you can do 10 pull-ups at 100 kilos and then you go up to 105 kilo and you can now only do eight you probably it's probably a good indicator that yeah, you've yeah, gained yeah. a little bit of fat maybe not getting as much muscle as you thought and then vice versa if you drop down to 95 kilos and you can now do 12 pull-ups or you can add more weight onto your pull-up maybe you've uh, done a good job of holding on to your muscle mass and you've actually dropped some good body fat so i think they're a good test of, of relative strength and then a lot like i said the, the team sports use it as like a test of relative mm -hmm. power as well so if you're gaining strength while saying the same way you probably increase your overall power output so i think they're a good test but they're not essential to be trained all the time again similar to the deadlift i guess if you've got a goal of being good at doing pull-ups yeah maybe you should do them but yeah. otherwise what are your uh, favorite alternatives? I think you touched on like that pull down. Have you got any like two or three exercises that you like for um, upper back instead? I really like like eccentric pull down, um, pull down machine. Lat pull down. Mm -hmm. Lat pull down. Um, I like feet elevated. Yeah. Because it is actually really hard. Um, then obviously you can like <laughs> load it. Everything yeah. body weight is hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you do have. I always seen you doing weighted chin ups in your plan. Yeah, I, I like do. I, not again, not currently, but I do really like them. But I, again, like I'm, I can do a, a set of chimps and I can keep good postures. But again, you see a lot of people coming into this like really extended position, which changes like the orientation of the lats. I think you'd be better off doing a lat pull down and really focus on keeping like a ribs down, okay. stacked yeah, position, definitely. trying to keep your body still. I think you probably get a lot more of that than doing like a chin up badly. So that posture is really, really cr crucial with that. Like you don't want to be thrusting yourself back and forth when yeah. you're doing like lat pull down like you bring in the bar down and you should maintain the posture as you said the trunk so yeah. definitely always quality over like quantity yeah um so for me it's a uh, it's again individual if, if someone really wants to be good at them yes train them find a variation which suits you progress gradually you know using assistant bands um like i really like the pattern you kind of recommended to me like start with like a couple of body weights and then at you know back off set yeah legs. so like a top yeah. set do your body weight. yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, there's a progression system in place yeah there, so so yeah they're actually quite enjoyable so we like we, we both agree they're a good test of relative strength yes you don't have to do them they can be a great exercise if you can do them properly but they're by no means essential like there's no exercise that's essential um apart from clean and jerk and snatch if you're weightlifter <laughs> obviously um but there's no exercise that's essential there are alternatives and we're always going for that quality of a quantity approach and we really want you to uh to be able to do them well if you are going to do them rather than just doing always, them for the yeah. sake or butchering them exactly well we agreed we always agree. we always agree it's just like we've discussed this beforehand and uh we just yeah. basically said that <laughs> nah! we're gonna i'm in trouble now i'm gonna hear that now for the next uh, i know um, next couple oh, of days we have in a word <laughs> okay move, moving on the last question someone asked uh which i think is quite interesting is um the differences between uh dieting if you're doing like a, a performance-based sport like powerlifting and weightlifting versus uh bodybuilding or aesthetic focus or as, yeah bodybuilding slash aesthetics this the question was bodybuilding but it's the same yeah. kind of idea for aesthetics uh do you want to kick us off um do you want me to kick off let's kick off cool i think there's a lot of similarities compared to um differences like the protein intake is going to be fairly similar especially during the off season where people are kind of at either calorie maintenance or like a super small surplus slash slash a normal surplus with the aim of gaining some muscle which is one of the goals of both of the bodybuildings depending on the person but most people's goal in the off season will be to to gain some muscle mass so the protein intake is going to be similar the fats are going to be fairly similar um i guess the main difference is comes from like the nutrition of uh pre and post workout um obviously with bodybuilding you're trying to maximize muscle protein synthesis so you're looking for protein feeding uh post training with powerlifting weightlifting you're probably looking for uh 
a bit more of a, a, a glycogen replenishment as well. So you're probably looking for some extra carbs that you might not necessarily have to have for bodybuilding. You will as well for bodybuilding, but I think when the out bodybuilding, you're trying to progress your training, much like powerlifting, but if your training isn't progressing week on week, it's not as much of an issue as if it is with a strength sport. I think with like in like a broad picture, basically the biggest difference is that with powerlifting and weightlifting, you use in nutrition mostly for the performance outcome. Whereas like in bodybuilding, you're using it purely if it's a show, which I think that would be the ultimate goal for that sake of. So you would sacrifice your training, you know, your energy levels for the sake of the way you look like. Absolutely. During the off season, a lot of people are doing yeah. really good training, but when you get the, the, the difference is massively arise when you get nearer to a competition. Um, so if you look at powerlifting and weightlifting, like people think that they're dieting the whole time. The aim of powerlifting and weightlifting and, and weight category sports is to spend as little time in a deficit but, as yeah. possible. You really want to stay at maintenance. That's just not a possibility with bodybuilding. And you see some like really low calorie diets, very low carb diets, and they're not going to be, um, you know, they're not going to be optimal in terms of trying to get good training outcomes. You know, I like to say um, you usually cut maybe kilo or two, like very little before you compete. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, I had experience when I was cutting, cutting maybe three or four, which is quite a lot, but I know people who cut maybe six or more. Mm -hmm. Um, and from my experience, those people always perform bad, yeah. like poorly. So I know that the research is there and it's not quite that like conclusive, whether it actually affects your performance, but just from my like subjective opinion, Mate, it's hundred percent does. If you train at certain body weight and you perform in well, or you lift in certain numbers, when you then suddenly do, you know, a calorie deficit, you you're going to be weaker. You, yeah. You're not going to perform better. Like you always said that you you do feel good when you compete, but like maybe would you feel better if you wouldn't have? Oh, do you know? yeah. Absolutely. The difference between like when I've been at weight far from competition and not had to do the calorie deficit and just do a weight, a water load or mm -hmm. uh, manipulating gut weight compared to being in a, like the last eight weeks having to cut like a kilo or two body weight. Uh, the difference is massive and absolutely yeah. I try and stay, but that's what I mean. So with powerlifting and weightlifting, if you can be at your category, where I compete at 74, um, I want to be at 76, 77 all the time. So that when I actually get to the hardest training, I don't have to be in a deficit. And you compare that to bodybuilding where they're in a deficit those last few weeks. And it's, it's, it's crazy. How it's a huge it deficit. And then I guess when you're in such a big deficit, that's when the difference changes with your protein. Yeah. If you're at maintenance the whole time, you can get away with 1.6 to 1.8 grams of protein a kilo i think when you're in such a surplus uh, sorry such a deficit what it's like it? phew, mate i'd probably say they're up to like three grams like it, 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 it because you're in such a deficit and they've got so much muscle mass i would yeah. say that they'd have to be up to about three grams that's, yeah, it's almost it's double that yeah yeah it's almost double so that's where the massive differences come from um so i think while powerlifting weightlifting has a has a weight category you're trying to make it as easy as you can to stay in that while bodybuilding is it, it does get super tough and it's just not going to be optimal in terms of like your your training outcomes which isn't your main goal your main goal is to look a certain way yeah. um come the day so training is second and the dietary is first while powerlifting your nutrition has to be fantastic your recovery your sleep has to be great but the training comes first yeah. um so other differences that are quite interesting actually when you think about like supplements like we probably use the same supplements like creatine mm -hmm. um maybe not creatine for depending on how much weight water weight you'd hold as a bodybuilder closer to a competition um but one thing that i, I read about which is quite interesting is like beta alanine is quite a um common more well people talk about it for powerlifting weightlifting but it's a um it like buffers the um lactic acids for when it gets about 40 seconds mm -hmm. so you can actually train a little bit harder a little bit longer but when have you ever done a 40 second set in weightlifting? Complexes? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's board it's driver, a, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Like when are you doing a set of 20 on anything? Well, mm -hmm. bodybuilding, it's common practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in terms of like, that would be a supplemental difference would mm -hmm. be, uh, you'd both be taking protein, probably caffeine, probably creatine, but bodybuilders are going to get a lot out of stuff like, like there that's going to buffer the, the lactic acid and help you get a little bit more at your training while weightlifting and powerlifting, you're not really going to get any benefit. As from it's much more effort, yeah. Because sure, you set to last 20, 30 seconds, you can't, <laughs> you're going to be okay. Oh, uh, when you're doing single snatches, it's like below a second. The lactic acid yeah. is uh, not kicking in. <laughs> um, that would, yeah. No, that's a good child. I like that. Um, uh, yeah. I think so, that's yeah, a good comparison. Because I think when people say powerlifter weight, they always think of the, the super heavyweight guy, mm -hmm, really overweight, mm -hmm. unhealthy. 
it's just not an accurate representation of what actual proper powerlifters and, it's a and good level it's a weightlifting. Stigma, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, not all powerlifters and weightlifters are just like right. look at, uh, unhealthy. If you look at like Will Sahori, if you look at like some of the women that are coming in powerlifting now that are so muscular, like Jess Baretner, you look at some of the weightlifters, they're incredible shape. shape. There's right. so many similarities, but then the differences start to come in as you get nearer to competition and your priorities start to change ever so slightly. Um, how much of a, a hit do you like? You spend some time in a calorie deficit. Um, how much do you find that affects your training? And like, how much do you prefer to be at like around maintenance or big time? You would ideally just be in maintenance. So then, when you actually compete, which obviously I haven't done in a while, but it's just easy transition. Yeah. Um, being in the deficit and lifting heavy is really hard. Like. Do you find it hard in the sessions or do you find the recovery hard? Bit of both? In a session, bit yeah. of both. But I would probably say that the load is just heavy. It just feels heavy. It just feels heavy and you don't want to lift like that. Like I can tell that when I'm in a bit of deficit, I know that it's just not going as you would like. Sure. My uh, So I was talking about how I'm in like a, a lower stress training block at the minute. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually trying to get down to my competition weight at this point mm-hmm. so then I can spend the rest of the year at calorie maintenance mm-hmm. which is going to be tricky over Christmas but I want to get like I'm about 77 at the minute I'm trying to get down to 76 and then get into a small surplus and then just stay between 76 and 77 I think so when the, the training gets harder I don't have to go back into that deficit because while it's low yeah. stress now now is the time exactly it just takes the more best um, time, yeah. it takes more um what's the word uh, what's the word uh, it's harder it's harder to stay What's the word I'm thinking of? I've lost it. Ah. I'm trying to, it takes more discipline. Discipline is okay, the word. It takes yeah. more discipline to stay at 76 than getting, you know, mm. gaining a few kilos. And uh, uh. I think when you have a plan like that, when everything's just like nice and secured, like a bit of general prep, yeah. it's the best time to play with the body weight. Absolutely. And like, yeah, do it when it's in the low stress period. And then when you get to your hardest training, you can be at a maintenance or when I'm saying surplus, I'm talking like a 50 calorie surplus, which we know in terms of weight gain, you're not even gonna, you're not even yeah. gonna notice it, but it's gonna be optimal for your training. Um, so the idea with, with powerlifting weightlifting is to be at maintenance or small surplus during your hardest training. Well, when things are getting hard for bodybuilding, oh, it's good, man. Like you see some of the things I was following, um, Chris Bumstead, who uh, I've grown a mustache for to uh, in, <laughs> um solidarity to uh to chris um but like he's he's dying he's a massive guy he's on low calories man. they I were think he was sub 2000 calories like 1.6 1.5 i thought it was like, 1.6 yeah i couldn't quite remember 1600 calories newborn. man must be 100 plus Hungry. kilos <laughs> yeah i'm 74 and i eat 2700 but that's, that's what they do the sacrifice they do the commitment it's, it's fair, fair play to them but you literally play in like a tough game there yeah but um you know the show must go on it's uh <laughs> it's funny with the bodybuilding like the amount of like disordered eating that can come out of that because it's so um it's so strict and regimented there's so like with powerlifting and, and weightlifting yeah. there's a lot more flexibility there but you the outcome is there's like a lot of people that bodybuild have really disordered eating uh really struggle with like eating disorders and, and like flexibility and during the off season they really struggle with kind of getting back to a, a slightly more normality life where they're allowed to go out and you know have a drink with friends have some good food they're so you know it, as you it's know super as they go through the year or the season like the deficits and you know the the training plan they're going through like most people would say that they they are a moody people they are moody yeah. people like you you constantly hungry basically so it's it's not fun um and as you said it like it can lead to a lot of like eating disorders especially post the show sure. like big feet um obviously if you manage this well that's great but then i think that's where like having a coach yeah a bodybuilding coach yeah. that understands that disordered eating like, is a side effect the of health bodybuilding. afterwards 100 mm. percent. that first block of training the aim should be to gain weight yeah because it's such an unhealthy yeah. um states state, but your aim should be to kind of be in a small surplus because a lot in particular like yeah. women would have a lot of issues with like losing the period like having effects like that so trying to get back to some kind of normality in that yeah. first transitional block should be the key and that's where a coach comes in and having a confidence in that approach so there's a lot of similarities but the similarities definitely die out as you get closer to competition and then they're almost two different ends of the spectrum excellent there you go guys that's our three questions like i said if you have any uh, feedback please let us know if you have any ideas for future podcasts uh please drop a comment or drop us a message anything else to say no i'm happy thanks for listening guys until next time see you soon